In this video, we'll be taking a look at some additional strategies for how we can work with metal materials. So one thing I want to show you is the standard brush, and if we change the drag uh, stroke type to drag rectangle and choose a different kind of alpha, we can choose a lot of different alpha shapes to kind of work with here. And so I'm going to use like this alpha 08 and just try to use that. And I'm going to hold on alt and I'll click on the the barrel of the cannon like this and I'm just going to go ahead and click solo like this with th this here and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, hold alt and then kind of drag out on the cannon now um, if that's too deep I can tap U and then click and then drag down this way and just change the intensity and hold down alt a little bit so if I want to get some just kind of surface noise kind of going on for this and a little bit of overall kind of noise I can do that um, I do want to show you this before I get going too far on this. We can actually hold the shape of this. And on my interface, I actually have a uh, store morph target. We kind of looked at this earlier um, for doing the layer height information. But you can click store morph target. That actually sits within uh, this area for morph targets. And you can do a store and delete and switch. And that's all just put and put up here on the interface like that. So I'll store this. And what I can do now is I can just kind of drag some of this stuff out. I'm going to hold down Alt, let go of Alt to go up and down with the uh, different strokes that we have. Like this within here. And I'll hold down Alt and then keep dragging this out. Now, depending on, uh, you know, what kind of size and things like that that you're hoping for and you're looking for. You got that. Now I do have a brush down here that is a morph brush. So if we do this, it's going to paint back to the difference that we had at the very beginning, like that model that we stored at the very beginning. So we can always switch like this and I'll switch to the previous state that I was at. But I want to use this brush to kind of brush back to where we were at. So I could um, just sculpt into this and I could kind of raise the surface up here or push it back down like this. And so you could get some interesting results with uh, that as well, just kind of pushing that uh, surface back to where it was at before. Now this brush could actually work also with um, alphas as well. So we can kind of drag this thing out like this. And we're getting kind of different patterns for that. We can uh, basically raise or lower the surface back to the original position that we're at before like this. And maybe we don't want anything on there, like on this part of the cannon, and we just kind of uh, drag this thing back and make it kind of clean in this area. And uh, if this is too strong in any of the areas, you can kind of use this as like an eraser tool and just kind of erase back uh, some of the details that we had before. Okay, so if I'm kind of happy with this, I'm going to leave it kind of like this here. Another thing that we can do is I'm going to delete the morph target on this thing. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and say store morph target. I'm going to show you how you can sharpen up details at, uh, like maybe get towards the end of the model and you want to, uh, sharpen up details. We're going to use this thing called polish here and we're going to polish the surface. So it's going to kind of, um, smooth everything out and that seems rather counterintuitive, but what we're going to do is do an inverse of that. So with the morph slider that we've got, and so we're going to take that thing that made it really soft and it's going to turn it into something that's a little bit harder edge. So this polish actually exists and it's under deformation. And if you go to polish, that's where that slider came from for there. Okay, so I like to just try to put this all on the interface, make it a little bit easier to kind of get to. So we stored the morph target and then now I'm gonna run polish and I'm just gonna run that slider all the way up to 100. You should see all these details kind of uh, soften up a bit and through here. It'll just take a second. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to run the polish depending on the resolution of the model. And so you can see it's done now and all that kind of detail that was there was gone. So we can hit switch now because we can switch back and forth between the two different states. And we can go switch and then we can drag the slider to the left. And you can see how this is um, really crispening up some of those details in there. So if you ever have a sculpt that just doesn't feel like it's got enough kind of um, depth to the information or you're baking a normal map and you just kind of want to punch that thing up a little bit more, this could be a technique that could uh, help out with that and kind of get those kind of details in there. And so the other thing, I'm going to I'm gonna, uh, hit undo real quick and I'm going to take the slider, drag it this way a little bit. I'll delete the morph target. I'll store a morph target for this. And then what we're going to do is go to the surface area and we're going to go to noise. Now there's a plugin for noise on here 
that we can get like an overall noise on this thing. Um, you can use the noise plugin. The noise plugin's got a lot of different things that we could do on there. Um, maybe uh, what I would maybe choose is maybe something like granite, and we've got a scale factor on here. And then maybe we could up the scale factor, maybe make this like five, somewhere in there. Let's go 10, something like that, or 20, and hit OK. Now I'm going to take the basic mix uh, for the noise and put that down to zero. And then the strength of the uh, this thing, I'm going to put this up just a little bit like this, kind of zoom around. And... Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna change the the strength a little bit like this, and so what I'm currently seeing is if we go back into that noise plugin and click this, and we go to edit, we can go back to uh, this granite, and maybe the scale is just too big, and we'll do one, and you can see what we've got going on there, and hit OK, so. This scale of one, I think that will work. And we've got the strength, and maybe that's just too high. And we can go do a neg we could do a negative number like this. So maybe we choose a number like like this within here, and I'll hit uh, I'll hit OK. And now we have to actually apply that to the uh, mesh. So I'll hit Apply to Mesh, and I actually did that kind of deformation on there. Now if I do switch, that's what we held before we did that operation. And now we can use the Morph Brush, and we can kind of uh, sculpt in some of these details that we've got for the granite that's going on there. So if I make the brush size smaller, obviously this is... It, it did quite a bit to move the surface on, on uh, this thing. So. Um, you know, I'd have to be kind of careful with that, but if I wanted to introduce this, like it was kind of like really chipping away at the surface and it kind of really eroded it, I could kind of emulate that. Something like that. And just keep painting on here and I'll come up right to this edge in here. And um, I don't know. I'm just trying to trying to build something that's a um, uh, little bit more interesting to kind of look at. Right through there. So we got something like that. Um, we've looked at the Damien Standard Brush and how that can actually be used to uh, do some different kind of cracks and different um, smaller things like this. So I just tap S to kind of build some of these more micro cracks and fissures that are coming through here. And then maybe I use kind of what the computer gave me and then kind of build off the top of that. And then if we come through with some of these marks that we've got and we use maybe Trim Dynamic to make the brush size a little bit smaller, we can kind of push these things in. And kind of get some uh, chips that even come along some of these different kind of cracks that we got going on there. And even H polish, if we just take this one and we push, push down, you can get these little kind of divots that you kind of push into the model. So maybe I'm like pushing and chipping on these edges and through here, like that. And if we also get kind of a nice alpha, we'll, we'll go back to the standard brush. We'll do the drag rectangle, and then we can do. Um, some alphas like this, uh, this alpha 58, and I hold down alt and then drag this thing out. Now it's pretty strong, I'll tap U to do the intensity kind of low, and so then now I can kind of just drag this out, and it's building some things that kind of feel like uh, scratches. Now if you find any black and white images, you can import those in, you can actually pull these in and import in your own image. And you can find file types. You can see you can do BMP, uh, PSD, JPEGs, things like that. Um, so, like if I navigated to a uh, location for for that where uh, those things sit, um, let's take a look here. 
So I'm going to click this to my tools and then alphas and then find something like this. Um, I'm just going to grab this. It's got a bunch of lines. And if I click and drag out, you can see what it's going to build for us. So I hold on alt. I can dig in like this. Um, now it might show you like a square kind of pattern if you're not careful. One thing you could do on this is go to alpha and go to modify and do, uh, there's a uh, radial fade on here, right here. So if we drag that up, you can see it kind of softens out the edges of that a little bit. So we could drag something like that out. I'm just going to smooth back the results just ever so slightly on it. And that's kind of got a fiber kind of feel to it. So let's go ahead and let's import in a different uh, a different map that we've got. I do have some splatters and some dirt. So let's go um, import and take a look at some of the different dirt and things that uh, exist within here. So I'll do this, this one here. Again, this is just you going out and maybe finding some different images that would would work rather well for this. So if I'm holding down Alt and I'm clicking and dragging that out, that's giving me a really nice kind of pattern that's uh, going all over the entire model. Now it's uh, the this is the small level detail. So let me show you in this area if I do something like this. And usually I just let the computer do about 85 to maybe 90 percent of the work and then you got to do some work yourself on top of that right so you just never usually just give uh, you know let the computer just do all the work so maybe I'll go back with trim dynamic hit up some of these edges take a look at this pattern that it built maybe go to Damien standard and then maybe start to see where could I draw through on this that's pretty intense so let's drop down the intensity U put that down on maybe 20 and then kind of lightly go through this that's even a little bit too strong so 15 these are the this is the last finaling kind of stage after you're doing all the large medium level details like some of these cracks you can consider medium level but uh, as they get smaller and smaller this is definitely the the uh, the tertiary uh, details that you would be doing at this point so you can spend quite a bit of time obviously at this stage kind of like noodling and that's why it's good to have the computer do um, most of the work for you. You just saw ZBrush does have this problem where every now and then it does does this like really s uh, straight stroke through the entire model. Just, usually if that happens, just hit undo. And um, if you're worried about losing a lot of your stroke information, just lift your brush up and that counts. This is stroke, 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 instead of like one continuous long stroke. Because if anything happens, then you kind of lose that. So hopefully you can see by some of these things I'm showing you within here that this gives you some kind of uh, strategy that you can use. Um, one last brush that I will show you that's not on this list within here is if you go to B and then N for noise, there is a noise brush that you can uh, use and kind of sculpt on within here. Um, the results I've gotten from that kind of vary and sometimes it works pretty good and Sometimes it doesn't give me quite the results that I'm hoping for, so um, I'll leave that up to you and how much you want to kind of push the surface on there and how much you want to try to erode the surface. But I'll just kind of paint just a little bit more on this, and then we'll bring everything back and kind of take a look at it. Always uh, check the work that you're doing against everything else and you need to be thinking about scale and how big this thing is so the amount of detail that you put on here and the strokes that you paint are going to say something about the scale of this object. Um, if you've got things that are way way too small it's going to make it feel like it's a smaller object and if it's really really large like this these kind of bigger bumps and they're all over the place um, it might make the canon read incorrectly for what the scale is. So try to take a look at your reference that you have and match it to, to the reference. Um, this is something else too. I just want to make sure you guys know about the see-through option. So I've got pure ref in the background and got the reference back here. And so I'm able to drag the see-through slider so I can take a look at the reference and then just keep kind of bouncing back and forth. So I'm going to hit shift R real quick. That's going to do the best possible render for us and we'll check our work. And there's some different strategies for doing the high res for the metal work.